What's going on guys, welcome back. So today what we are going to do is create a price monitoring tool for sneakers on Nike. Uh, so let's go ahead or on nike.com. So let's go ahead and run this and see how it works here. So we're gonna say Python main.py. Now what's going to happen is a browser is gonna open up. It's going to navigate to the page of the sneakers. It's going to repeatedly scrape the price of the sneaker and it's going to go ahead and let me know if there's any change in the price. So you see here we have uh, DevTools is listening. This is the browser that we opened up here. Um, typically, this is a suite that is used for automated testing of the browser or for applications that the browser is rendering, but we're going to use it for just scraping the internet. So you can see price stayed at 160, and then we can see, if we take a look at the code, which we'll do a little bit more in depth later here, but we can see that price, price dropped, price rose, or price stayed are the three kind of outcomes that we can have of this, and then we get to see what the price is at. Uh, ideally, what we could do, we're, we'll extend this down the line, but what you could do is send yourself desktop notifications with the link to the to the to, the, to a drop or to to the sneakers, and then you can go ahead and just instantly purchase the sneakers if the price uh, meets a certain certain uh, point that you're looking for. Okay, so now we've got that. Uh, so that's what we're looking. So that's what we're looking at for the most part here. Um, so now let's go ahead and take an in-depth look at the code here. So what we see on at first here is from Selenium import WebDriver. So when we import WebDriver, this is how we're going to interface with the browser programmatically. So what this is going to do is basically provide us with uh, again that that third-party interface, that kind of that that connection between the code and the browser that's going to allow us to control it. Next up here, we're going to import time as well. This library is going to be used to basically delay uh, the am the amount of times that we go and scrape the price because if we're scraping every as fast as we can. That's way too many requests, and we're not actually catching the price updates that we want to catch. There are more longer time frame uh, price updates, and we also want to catch we also want to catch them as soon as they happen. So five seconds is kind of a good time frame for that. Uh, next up here, we have our class sneakers bot. So when we create an instance of this class, so basically when we go like this, remember when creating an instance of a class looks like this. So if I were to just create a variable, it would look like that. So when we go ahead and create an instance of the class, I'm going to need to pass a URL. And this is the URL that we copied down earlier. So remember, you can go ahead and pay, pa pass that URL variable there to the sneakers bot. Uh, next up here we have the self.driver. So we have self.driver equals equals webdriver.chrome. And again, we're passing the path to a Chrome driver. And again, remember that is the interface for interacting with the browser. So we go ahead and we get this Chrome driver from this downloads right here. And again, this link will be right in the uh, right in the description. And again, what you guys want to do before you download any version of Chrome is go ahead and check out your version. So here I see I have uh, version. 83.0.4103.61 and so then I when I was downloading here I would want to download or I downloaded the 83.0.4 etc uh, etc so you guys want to download the Chrome driver that matches the version of Google Chrome that you have if they do not match go ahead and update your Google Chrome uh, anyways all right so next up here we have a function or method called get price so what this what this method or function does. Remember method and function are largely synonymous. In our case methods are used when we're talking about functions that are part of a class. Functions is kind of a more generic term. Alright, so now we can say def get price. So we can say uh, we go ahead and we tell the driver to navigate to the URL. We then tell the driver to go ahead and find an element by by the X path. So remember if we take a look at at the DOM here, we can see that this is our our tree. And if we look at our X path, that is a destination to a node in our tree. So in our case here, the destination node is this div, which contains the price. And the way to uniquely identify this is with this data dash test equals product uh, price here. So with this with this data dash test equals product price, uh, what we can do is we can go ahead and we can um, we can go ahead and we can set that up to be the uh, specific element that we target. So we can go ahead and say element by x path, uh, passing this this odd looking string here. But basically, this is some syntax for finding it by the x path and by product price. Uh, so then, after we get that element, this is still a web element, so it's still a an object from the Selenium library. So we can still reference some of the HTML at, or some, some of the attributes of this at element uh, through with our code programmatically here. So we want to say. Uh, we want to get the price, so we want to get the inner HTML. Remember, guys, if we looked here, we saw that this price is actually in between these tags, this div tag, open and closing tag here, and we want to get the price. 
So we want to save the inner HTML between those tags. And once we get that, we want to strip out the, uh, the dollar sign, which is before. So then we just have a string, which is 160. And then once we have that, we want to go ahead and convert it to an integer and return that value. All right. So now we get to the main execution of our program. We see that we, get, we saw all the functionality. Now we need to see how it all comes together. So let's we'll take a look at this main function here. So essentially here what we have is a URL. Um, and this URL is going to this URL is going to be the destination of the shoe. Um, after we start the bot, we want to go ahead and pass that URL to the bot. When we do that, we're going to be able to, uh, that's going to set it as that field in the bot. So we see self.sneakers URL is going to be set as this URL here. And if you guys already copied and pasted that from earlier, that should be good to go. Uh, next up here, we're going to say last price. We're going to create a variable called last price, set it equal to none. And then we're going to start a loop, a permanent loop. So we can say while one uh, or while true. Um, so we go ahead and grab the price. So basically, so we create a variable called last price and then repeatedly get the price. Then we go ahead and see, does last price exist? And then for the first iteration of this loop, last price is not going to exist. So if last price doesn't exist, we're going to jump out of this. We don't execute any of this code here. And we instead start executing the code here. And so we say last price equals price. So we set the last price and then we sleep. So now for the second iteration here, last price is set. And then we say, uh, again, continuing our loop here, last price is set now. So if last price, and that would be continue, that would be yes. So if last price is less than, or if, if the price is less than the last price, then we go ahead and say the price dropped. If the price is greater than the last price, then we say the price rose, or the, we can call this the new price. And we can say otherwise the price stayed the same. All right. So that's kind of just a basic, short little uh, sort of algorithm, I suppose, for, um, for calculating this here. Uh, so, all right, so what we want to go ahead and now do is, as we saw it run earlier, um, but generally speaking, what we would do is we could set up some, some desktop notifications with some hyperlinks. Uh, we'll go ahead and configure that in a future episode when we add, so extend the functionality or uh, expose this, expose this uh, through an API that can be queried or whatnot. So uh, let's go ahead and end it, or end it up there. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Remember, all the links for everything are in the description. Uh, I encourage you guys to follow along. This is a fun video for getting started with programming in Python. And, uh, yeah, again, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Your support is greatly appreciated. Any thumbs up or subscriptions would be fantastic. And I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.